There she goes. Time to get to work. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another edition of Teardrop RV Travels. I know, I know, last episode I left you hanging and I apologize, but I was absolutely worn out. But I've had some life-changing things happen. And if you want to see them, come on. Okay, so here's the deal. I am in the Ocala National Forest, and I'm hanging out at my Uncle Tom's lake house. And I know I had this big secret to tell. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah, it was kind of like, it was kind of like that. All right, here's the deal. When I was in the Oregon Mountains a couple of weeks ago, up at 6,000 feet, freezing my tushy off, I had just had an interview release on Tiny Home Tours. Somebody saw me on Tiny Home Tours and heard me say that when I got back home, I was going to build a new camper because I wanted some more privacy and I wanted to make my coffee on the inside. So there I am at a picnic table sitting in the Oregon Mountains. A guy gets hold of me and makes me an offer on a camper. And to my surprise, it was very much the size I needed and perfect for me. So I've got a new rig. I mean, it's, it's right here. And I guess you guys want to see it. No? Yeah? Oh, yeah? All right, well, I'll show you. All right. Now, this coach is a 2002 uh, Taylor coach, so it's made in Canada. And apparently, if you have a Taylor coach, all of the coaches there are custom made. You just can't go buy one off a lot somewhere. You have to call Taylor Coach, tell them what you want, put down a deposit, and do all those things. And everyone is custom made, and they're made for Canada weather. So uh, it's, it's made very well. Well, there it is. My new rig. It is a six and a half foot wide, 17 feet long, Taylor coach okay so the reason I had to come to Florida early was because I had to come pick this thing up and there were only specific dates and times that I would be able to get to it to pick it up hook it up and bring it back and 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 take care of uh, a paperwork and and all that kind of stuff so I had to come early and so my my aunt and uncle uh, opened up their lake house to me so I'd have kind of a base of operations. You already saw in the very first of the episode that my little camper, my teardrop, pulling away. That's not sold. My older brother drove down from Nashville, got it, and, and took it back to Nashville for me so I didn't have two campers in Florida. So I will be taking this home and then going to Nashville to pick up the teardrop and bringing the teardrop home. I have plans for that, and we'll get to that in this episode, so have no worries, but I figure you guys, you guys want to see this rig. So the interesting thing about this rig is that the door is in the very back. That means it's easy for me to get into, and because the door is right there in the back, uh, I've got the camera, my new camera, which I'm still learning on the monopod and so it's hard to get it up and down exactly where I want it and get everything set. So I'm still learning but the picture ought to be really good and I have a, my super good mic on top so everything ought to be pretty good. Alright so the door is in the very back. It's very low to the ground so I can get in and out of it pretty easy. 
Now this is a custom Taylor coach. This did not come with a black tank or a gray tank or a toilet system. It has a shower. It has onboard water tanks, 16 gallon I think is what it is. But it did not come with black tank or gray tank. But that's okay because I would rather use a portable system anyway so I don't have to hook this thing up and drag it around when I want to go dump a tank. And I also like to use a composting toilet. So that's not a problem for me either way. Six and a half feet wide. 17 feet long from nose to tail. So there's about 15 feet of living space on the inside. And let's go check out that living space. Alright, so I just came in and turned on the lights. The camera is sitting in the back door. It's actually kind of hanging out the back door a little bit. So we're right at the back door. And we're just going to move through and I'll try and point things out. It's really small, so there's not a lot to see. But I, I, I'm pretty proud of it. So back door. Immediately inside the door, there's closet space and closet space. I've got junk sitting in the floor right now. So it's going to be hard for me to get into the closets. Right here... There's a shower stall. I'll turn around in a minute and show you guys this stuff. But here's the basic layout. Up front, right here, there's a dinette. Full-size dinette. Turns into a full-size bed. Over here, there's also a dinette. Turns into a single-size bed. Have a fridge right here. There's my sink. Has air conditioner in the top. Just move on in. Lots and lots and lots of storage space. Now this guy right here, that is a fold down bunk bed. So there's a bunk up there in case uh, I want someone uh, camping with me or I have my son with me or me and my brothers go fishing or or anything so there's a bunk up there there's my bed here and then the dinette right here turns into a bed now I'm sitting on the bed sink behind beside me don't mind all my stuff I've just got everything crammed in here I don't even have things organized yet I've been working on other things but right down here there's a microwave that I'll probably take out storage underneath there's the fridge there's the bathroom door there's the closet stuff over there and then here's the dinette so i'm going to apologize i wanted to reveal this with my last episode but this rig was three and a half hours away from me so i had to drive down and get it get all it squared away drive back up here get everything out of my teardrop and into this because my brother drove down 10 hours from Nashville and then we had to, he slept overnight and then we had to get everything rigged up and set up and get it hooked up for him to drive it back he did make it back to Nashville safe with the rig uh, with the with the teardrop and it's sitting in his garage right now. Now, I never really discuss money and finances. I know that some people who are travel vloggers talk about their money, their lack of money, how they get paid, how they don't get paid. Please help them because this is broke down or whatever. I don't do that on my channel. I don't discuss money on my channel. I don't discuss deals on my channel I I don't do things like that so as far as this rig is concerned I was made an offer on this rig too good to refuse because I was gonna go home and build one because the guy couldn't afford a rig this size I was gonna build one slightly smaller and cash flow it and get it done for as little as money as possible well getting this rig means I don't have to build out a camper and 
the gentleman that that uh, I got this from, as I said, was very generous offer on it. Because it was so generous, I'm going to sell my teardrop and take the proceeds from that minus some things I'll need to get for this camper to make sure that it's campable for me and things that I need if it needs a new battery or, or whatever else. But but the net proceeds after taking out the things I'm going to need for this, I'm going to put that money to the side. And I'm going to save it until the van build 2019. I'm going to go to the van build with that cash from selling my teardrop and I'm going to pay it forward. The generosity uh, on the offer on this rig, I'm going to be able to pay it forward with my teardrop. Now I was going to see about trying to possibly give my teardrop away to somebody or sell it very cheaply to somebody or whatever to try and pay it forward but I realized the logistics of that uh, was going to be horrible. If someone was say in California and they really needed it and they were deserving of it or however it goes when you pay things forward trying to get them to Kentucky where it's going to be to get the paperwork done to get everything squared away which was going to be a disaster so I figured the easiest thing to do would be go ahead and sell it and then the cash is readily available and I have a specific plan for that money for when I go out next year to the van build or actually it's this year because it'll be 2019 van build it'll be in November of 2019 of this year Badge knows what my plan is. Badge agrees that it's a great idea. And Badge is going to help. I'm going to build something for someone in need. And I have to talk to Jamie about it. But once I get it built, once I get this awesome thing built, I'm going to let Jamie give it away at the van build. So I'm going to build something for someone in need. And then I'm going to let Jamie work his magic that he does and he's going to give it away. I'll have more on that later, but I need to talk logistically with Jamie about that um, and figure out some things so I won't dive any deeper than that um, with this right now. Now for me, I can tell you this. Being able to stand up, put my legs on in privacy, take care of myself in privacy, make my coffee in the morning without going outside when it's cold. That's a life-changing thing for me. So, to Frank, who I got this from, thank you. I will pay the generous offer that you made to me with this rig. I will pay it forward, have no doubt. Now for the rest of you, this means that I have more opportunities to travel. Don't go to Colorado because you go up the mountains, it's cold. I learned that in the Oregon mountains not long ago. So I can go where it's colder because this rig is built for cold, re cold weather. It can help me with my plans for the future. I know you guys see a lot of camping and a lot of travel and just cool stuff, but I do jiu-jitsu. I train jiu-jitsu. I teach jiu-jitsu. This rig will give me the opportunity to carry more geese with me, better clothes, not better clothes, a few more clothes and something besides, besides shorts and t-shirts in case I need it. And when I travel, this will give me a better opportunity to stay and be more comfortable so when I go to different jiu-jitsu academies that want me to come teach I'll be able to go and be much more comfortable and it'll make it easier on me I, I don't know how else to say that this is this is gonna be so much easier on me now down here in the Ocala National Forest it's gorgeous I've yet to see an alligator but I was sitting out uh, under the carport with my Uncle Tom uh, a couple of nights ago, and he's, all of a sudden he said, he said, 
oh crap there's a bear well he didn't say crap but he said oh crap there's a bear and I turned around and looked and there was a 200 pound black bear right in the backyard just right in the backyard and then it ran across the yards and then uh, went over to somebody else's house we jumped on the golf cart and went chasing after it so I, maybe I could get some footage of it and we lost it well it doubled back and it it ruined some bird feeders and things so I've seen a black bear while I'm down here and, and I, I'm basically in a little retirement area so anyway it's really beautiful down here I've had lots of opportunities to play with the camera and see some birds up close and get some good shots of the water so I'm still learning the camera some of you have asked about all the equipment that I'm using now very soon I'm going to do an equipment update and I'll show you guys a new camera I'll talk about the uh, gimbal that I use for my action camera and I will go through all of that so, so don't worry well guys I tell you what this is going to be a Saturday episode so I want to try and keep it short I've been a lot of talking there's really not a lot to show you guys right now because all of my stuff's in here I don't have everything put away but I have a new rig I have a new rig sooner than I expected and my life has changed for the better guys thanks so much for watching please like share and subscribe I will see you on the next episode and don't worry because even if I didn't get to tell you last episode about the new rig I got to tell you this time so no legs no problem you guys still here why this episode's over go watch another episode go grab some merch maybe just subscribe thanks for watching guys and I'll see you on the next episode.